Welcome to this video series, where we explore the world of WebDriver.io to help you succeed in your test automation career. Hello, my name is Marco Cruz, and I'm the founder of Automate Now, and I'm excited to team up with Lambda Test to bring you these awesome videos. My background is in computer engineering, and I have over a decade in software testing experience. You can learn more about my company by heading over to AutomateNow.io, and you can also find us on YouTube by searching Automate Now. Inevitably, our test suite will continue to grow, and as it grows, it becomes more challenging to maintain our tests. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to organize your tests and test suite. There is a popular design pattern for this, which is known as the page object model or page object pattern. The page object model has many benefits, one of them being your tests are going to be easier to read. But I think the most important one is maintainability. It's going to become very easy for us to maintain our tests. Let me show you how. In this slide, I've represented a website on the left side here. Notice that this website has many different pages, as many websites do. For example, we may have a home page, a login page, a profile page, etc. Now, for every page, we're going to be having what is known as a page object. Okay, that is going to be a separate class. That page object is going to contain functionality that pertains to a given page. So, for example, if you have a login page, the page object for the login page will have things such as how to locate elements on that page. It may also have functions for logging in, for instance. Aside from the page objects, we're also going to have separate test classes. Now, the test classes are going to have the actual test that we want to write or the functionality that we want to test. These tests are not going to contain any logic, okay? They're simply going to be calling different functions from the page objects. So you can see that there's going to be one-to-one -one relationships between the tests and the page objects. If at any point there's a front-end change to the website, which causes our test to break, we won't have to do anything with our tests. The test will stay the same, we only need to update the page object that corresponds to the given test that broke. Let's have a look at the website for more context. When we visit this Lambda Test Playground website, we land on this page right here. So this would become our home page, and we would create a page object for this home page. That page object will have all of the different methods that we're going to need in order to interact with this page right here. Now let's have a look at this other page, for example, blog. This would be a separate page object, also containing functionality to interact with this page. Now, let's take a look at my account here. We're going to be automating this one right here, login. So we're going to create a page object for the login page, and we're going to find all the different elements on here, how to locate those elements, and how to sign into this page. We're going to be creating a test that is going to allow us to log in to this website. Let's have a look at that. We're going to begin by creating a new folder. That folder is going to contain all the page objects. So I'm going to right click on this right here that says tests. Okay, I'm going to right click that and say new folder. I'm going to call this folder page objects. And before we create that login page page object, first we're going to create what is known as the main page or the base page. That page object is going to contain logic that is going to be similar to all the different pages. For example, this page is going to contain things such as clicking on elements, entering text. That is something that we can do on any page. Okay, it's not going to be specific to a given page. So we're going to have a separate page known as the base page or main page, which contains all these common things. I'm going to right click the newly created folder and say new file. And I'm going to call this page.js. All right, let's go ahead and start building this class. We'll say export default class. And then we're going to call this page. Open and close brace. I have misspelling here, so let me fix that. Let's have a look at the last test that we wrote, which is this one, wait on tilde.js. This test showed you how to do different wait operations. The first thing that we do here, notice that we say browser.url. So we're visiting this URL. And pretty much we do that for all the other test classes that we've written. We say the page that we want to visit. Now I want to abstract this information away from this test right here, okay? The test shouldn't be concerned with this logic. We can put this away in the in this base page over here. Okay, so let's go over here and I'm going to create the first function in here. We're going to call this one open. So we'll say open and then this is going to take in a parameter. We're going to call this one path. Then we're going to add the body. And we're going to say return browser dot URL. Now let's grab the URL that we've been using. So let's go over here. This is the URL right here. And we'll paste that in here. 
And then at the end of this, we're going to add the path. We're going to say dollar sign and then embraces. We're going to say path. You may need to change the single quotes here to a tilde. Let me take you to the website. When we visit this page, this is the URL right here. We can see that it has index.php and then question mark route equals. Okay, so this part right here, we are missing right here from the URL. If we visit a different page, for example, the home page, notice that it also has this index.php question mark route equals. So we need to add this information to our URL right here. So let me go ahead and grab this. Okay, copy, and we're going to add it to the code. We need to add that right here after lambda test.io. So with this method, we're going to be able to call it and pass in a path for the page that we want to visit. There is one last thing that I need to do here. So this is going to be at the top. We need to add an import for this browser keyword. So we're going to say import, we'll say browser, we'll say from, then we'll add single quotes at wdio forward slash globals. Let me fix a typo here, globals like that. All right, so now we have the main page object here. Next, we can create the page object for the login page. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to right click page objects and say new file. I'm going to call this one login.page.js. I recommend that you use this pattern right here where you have the name of the page and then dot page so that it is clear to everyone that this is a page object. Okay, so we're going to hit enter. Every page object needs to inherit from the main page object over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that here. We're going to say import page from and we'll say single quotes dot four slash page dot js. Now let's go ahead and create the class. We'll say class login page extends page and then we'll add our body. Then at the end here, we're going to make sure that there's only one instance of this page. We're going to say export default new login page. Now, what are we going to put here? Basically, we're going to have all the different selectors for the elements that are going to be found on the login page. We're also going to create a method for logging in. So first, we're going to create getter methods for all the elements that we want to interact with. In our case, we simply want to log in. So we need to create a method for locating the username, also for the password, and for the signing button. So let's take a look at the website one more time. And I'm going to inspect this element right here. I'm going to right click and say inspect. And we see that this is an input element and we can use different things. Uh, one of them being the ID right here. So we can use this input email. Now let's go ahead and create a getter function for this right here. So let me copy this. And here we're going to say get input username. Then we're going to say return and then dollar sign to locate the element. And then we'll add in that ID that we found. Okay. Let me go ahead and add the rest of the elements to add them here. Okay. So I created one for the password and also for the login button. Now we're going to create a function that is going to do the whole login process, entering the username, the password, and then clicking the login button. Let's go down here and create that function. We're going to say async login. This will take in two parameters, the username and a password. Then we're going to say await this dot input username. We know that this is going to return this element right here, the username. Then we're going to say dot set value. And we're going to enter the username. We're going to do the same thing for the password. So let's go ahead and duplicate this line of code. I'm going to hold shift alt down. If you're a Mac user, you're going to hit shift option down. And then I need to update this here to password. And this one also. Lastly, we just need to click the button for logging in. Wait, wait this dot click login dot click. And there we have it. We created our getter methods and then we have a function here to be able to log into the website. The last thing that I want to do is to create another function over here that is going to open this page, this login page. So I'm going to say open and this is going to say return super dot open. Now we know that this is going to call the other function that we wrote in this main page class. This is going to go to this URL and it's going to visit whatever path we pass in. Okay. So we need to find a path for the login page. Let's go to the website and we see that the path for this page is simply login. So we're going to add that. We're going to put that right here. We have everything that we need in order to create the first test that uses the page object model. We have the login page page object. 
Now, all we need to do is to create a login test that is going to use this page object right here, along with this function in order to log into the website. Now, we're going to create a new spec file that has that login test. Right now, I noticed that it looks like this page object is under specs. I don't want it to be there. I want it to be under test. So we're going to drag and drop this into tests. Okay, we're going to say move. And now we have the separation here. This is what we want. We want to have page objects separate from the actual specs. Okay, so next we're going to right click specs. And we're going to say new file. And here we're going to call it login.spec.js. Notice that we added the word spec. Okay, I also recommend that you do this. Same thing with page objects. Just like we did here, we have login.page. We know that this is a page object. And that's how we're going to be able to tell that this is a page object, while this one is a spec file containing tests. Now I'm going to add some skeleton code to save some time. So here, the first thing that you see is an import statement. This is basically going to import the login page page object. This path right here may be different depending on how you set it up. And here we have the test that we're going to write. It's going to log in using valid credentials. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to say await login page, and we're going to call the open method inside of that page. Then I'm going to log in. So we're going to say await. Let me fix this one up here as well. We're going to say login page dot login. Okay. Now I already created an account with this website. So you may need to do that if you're following it along. And the username that I use is happy tester at test.com. My password is going to be simply password. Then I'm going to add a pause here so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to say await browser dot pause. We'll give it three seconds. Now let's go ahead and run this test to see how it works. Let me go ahead and save all my work. Then I'm going to bring up the terminal and we're going to run this command npm run webdriver IO. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm running only this spec file here. So let me go ahead to the webdriver IO config file and I'm going to update this here to say login.spec.js. You may refer to the previous videos in this series to learn about this webdriver IO config file. But essentially, we're just telling it to run only this spec file right here, the login spec. All right, so let's go back to the test, save everything one more time, and we're going to run this command right here. And it looks like the test failed. I took a closer look at this, and I noticed that in the login page, there's a couple of issues. For example, this parentheses right here don't need to be here. This was automatically added by the IDE, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this stuff right here. And I'm also going to update the path, right? I noticed that the path is not just login, but it's actually account slash login. Okay, so let me go ahead and save this and rerun the test. And here we see the website opening up. It enters the username, the password, does it very, very fast, but we can see that the test is passing this time. So let's do a quick recap of what we did. In order to implement the page object model, we created this page.js. That class contains all methods that are going to be common to all page objects. Next, we created a page object for the login page. And this one contains specific functions for the login page. For example, going to the login page, finding the different elements, actually logging in, and so forth. And lastly, we created a spec file, which contains the actual test that we want to do for the login page. Notice a few things about this test. First, it's very easy to read. Notice right here it says login page that open login page that login. So it's very self-explanatory. We can see exactly what is happening. And it's also going to be easy to maintain. Let's say, for example, that there's a change to the website and the selectors for the login page change. You won't have to update this at all. This will stay the same. We will simply go to the page object and update the selectors here. I hope you enjoy learning about the page object model. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Check out any of the links on the screen to get connected with the Lambda Test community get certified, and get access to the code that you saw today. See you in the next video.